Today is one of the most exciting days we've had in quite a long time guys and those of you that have been around for years now and have been asking about this non-stop well this is going to be really special for you. So first of all I want to give a shout out to my boy PS360 for putting me onto this one a few days ago but what he showed me I would have honestly never expected. Recreated, reinvented, and re-visualized one of the most iconic and fan favorite Dragon Ball manga we've ever done is back, thanks to Dark House, Poison Labo, and Renko. Dragon Ball Kakumi has returned, and I have to be honest, out of all of the fan manga we've done on the channel, this artwork may be the most beautiful I've seen yet. This is the beginning of a battle that will stain the very fabric of reality, but this story takes place even after a battle that tested Goku and Vegeta like none other. A battle against their own Saiyan brethren, Broly. These two went on to fuse together to create one of the strongest warriors the universe had ever seen. However, Goku's pureness led him to see the good in Broly and instead of ending the battle in blood, the two somewhat befriended one another leading Broly to be indebted towards Goku as a powerful bond was born. However, even while this was taking place and everything seemed to kind of remain calm in Universe 7, there was a growing disturbance stemming from events not too long removed. Seventeen stands with his family, looking off into the sunset unknowing of the consequences of his good-hearted actions. Over on Planet Sadala in Universe 6, we see Kale and Kalafla busily training as Kalafla begs Champa to teach her some new secret techniques of the gods. As she continues to ramble on, something catches Champa's attention though as all of a sudden, the ground begins to rumble as they all suspect maybe an earthquake. Why is Beerus in this universe, Champa says, as he suspects the commotion coming from him after sensing his presence for a quick second. Kalafla, of course, however, is taking this as some form of training or challenge as she gets fired up immediately. Simultaneously over in Universe 11, we see Topo kneeling before Lord Velmod as he entered the Palace of the Destroyer, but suddenly the same rumbling earthquake is felt here, instantly alerting both Topo and Belmod as they sense Goku briefly with his power shattering a kettle on the table. Oh, it's as if they're really close to us, Makarita says, chuckling. Earth and Universe 7, however, seems to be seeing the brunt of this collateral damage. Within the city, we see Krillin trying his best to mitigate the damage and keep as many civilians as safe as possible, but in his heart, he doesn't agree with how far this has gone as he thinks to Goku, hasn't your frenzied quest for power gone too far this time? Goku has reached the final test in his quest for divine power though and his will is stronger than ever. Amongst the skies, the battle that Goku finds himself in today is one on a multiversal level. One that will cause him more pain that's ever been inflicted on him before and one that'll push him to a level that mortals and gods alike thought not possible. This is Dragon Ball Kakumi and chapter 1 is Goku's final test of the gods. If you guys want to check out this fan manga for yourselves which I highly highly recommend because the artwork as you guys have seen is fire but I promise you you haven't seen anything yet. It gets absolutely ridiculous. The link will be down below in the description box as well as all of these guys social so please go follow them because they definitely deserve it for this project. If somehow you haven't done so already, be sure to have those notifications turned on by clicking the bell icon down below to never miss an upload. And if you guys have been enjoying all of the Dragon Ball content recently, consider leaving a like on this video as well. Be sure to follow on both Twitch and Twitter to stay up with me and all Dragon Ball and anime related content guys. But without further ado. Goku's awesome power can be felt across the multiverse as he trembles planets across the galaxies. Beerus too however is sending quakes through time and space, countering Goku with equal force. Back on Beerus' planet, Whis can sense something growing, something beginning to become a mist. All of a sudden a ring comes through his staff. As he answers, he seizes the Supreme Kai and the Elder Kai. Hello Sir Whis, the Supreme Kai says, 
I'm deeply sorry for my impropriety, but the universe is shaking. Moreover, he goes on, I feel Son Goku and Lord Beerus' auras are going berserk. May I ask for an explanation on what's currently happening? Whis begins to chuckle as he answers that this is the culmination of the training of Son Goku as we see Goku's Ultra Instinct reaching levels never before seen as even he himself is surprised at his own strength. Beerus tests him immediately though, sending a frightening beam right past his face with a devastating punch, but Goku returns one as well as both impacts devastate the planets behind them, slicing them in two. These two have gone completely nuclear as one swipe from either completely destroys planets anywhere near them. Goku ducks under him and then attempts to swing again, but Beerus dodges. He kicks Goku in the back of the neck, completely decking him and blanking his eyes briefly. Goku is able to rebound, however, and begins to fly away to create distance temporarily as he fires Key Blast back at Beerus. This is when Beerus reflects them using some strange technique, and this catches Goku off guard who was still leading Beerus on this chase as his own blast closes in on him, and a massive explosion is caused before Beerus. Through the smoke, however, it seems like the attacks did next to nothing to Goku as he clears his vision to Beerus' surprise. However, in an instant, Goku is behind Beerus and as soon as he's aware of the incoming, Goku releases a devastating attack at point blank. The artwork on this attack is legendary as Ultra Instinct Goku's attack completely obliterates everything in front of it, shattering a moon in front of them as Beerus is nowhere to be seen. This is when we see Beerus being absolutely blown away, flying into another planet, going directly through it and slicing off the top half of another planet as well as he soars through it. In an instant, at a speed untraceable though, Beerus has grabbed Goku by his face and instantly appeared before him again. As Beerus reels back and prepares his own attack, we've never really seen him this ferocious before as he attempts to shove a Hakai right in Goku's face. As he attempts to erase Goku from the face of existence, he comes up empty as Goku suddenly disappears. Stop running away Saiyan, Beerus yells, as we see Goku taking off again continuing the chase. It doesn't suit you. As the two continue their multiversal level battle, they land on a planet called Gia, scorching the fields. It seems Goku is trying to do his best to battle Beerus to the best of his abilities of course while also attempting to not really disturb life on too many planets, but a battle of this caliber is really impossible to control. Beerus continues to chase Goku as he grabs him by his foot and slings him with just absolutely all his might guys and this next shot is another one of those shots that is just out of this world. Slinging him with just power so fierce that it would have ripped the limbs off of any other being and I just gotta stop and appreciate this artwork again guys as Beerus just absolutely slingshots Goku through space. As Goku rips through the solar system, the stream of power left by both of their auras casts a blinding light throughout the galaxy. Even in this divine form of Ultra Instinct, Beerus' power was far too overwhelming for Goku as he fails to stop himself from flying through space at thunderous speeds. He eventually goes crashing towards a planet called Taco Taco, a planet lush with life and inhabitants below. This is when one of the beings begins to notice a light quickly getting larger and larger above them as Goku crashes into the city. The force at which Goku crashes into this planet is so devastating that not only is the damage done to everything nearby absurd as a crater is formed, but Goku himself is lodged into the planet as his body shatters and becomes cemented in the planet's crust. As steam comes from everything around the crater, including Goku, the light finally dies out and we can see him fading in and out of consciousness, being severely overpowered by Beerus this time. As long as he stays here however, this planet is in danger as Beerus has no intentions of stopping their fight here. Above planet Taco Taco, Beerus is preparing an attack at a scale of which will erase anything it comes in contact with as a massive supernova attack forms overhead on his fingertip. Beerus' attack casts a light over the planet similar to the sun, but this attack will permanently wipe the light from this planet if it hits. 
This is when Goku begins to regain consciousness, and he coughs up blood as he's still lodged in the planet's mantle, but he does begin to move slightly. Noticing what's about to happen, Goku courageously rips himself from the crater and commands the child that was near him when he crashed to get out of here now as he begins to take on that same vicious form of Ultra Instinct again. As he and Beerus make eye contact, Goku meets him outside of the planet's atmosphere to face him head on. Why are you putting a whole species in danger, Lord Beerus, Goku thinks to himself as he attempts to get away from the planet. This is when he looks down and makes a shocking discovery, however, as he feels something tugging at his leg. When he looks down, he sees the child from before who's grabbed onto his leg as he flew off into space. Get ready, Beerus says, as he has no regard for any life that gets in their way. Goku lands on a rocky surface, having to think pretty fast now that this other life is in his hands as well, but his options are now far more limited. Beerus releases his attack. The blinding light instantly consuming both Goku and the child below as the face of absolute terror can be seen from Goku as a sphere of destruction engulfs them both. Beerus' attack outsizes the structure Goku landed on dozens of times over, similar to a pebble next to a basketball as pure destructive intent can be felt across the multiverse. Even back on Beerus' planet, the oracle fish begins to worry, saying that these both are really astonishing. Whis, however, has a really bad feeling about things and considers joining them briefly. The Oracle Fish, who's now fallen asleep, however, begins to murmur omens again as he mentions the universes and consequences that will arise. Might this somehow be linked to their current fight, Whis thinks? Back on Earth, things seem to be finally calming down as the battle between the two behemoth gods subsides. Both Gohan and Piccolo can sense something amiss, however, as Piccolo comments that it seems Goku has come to terms with his power finally. Your father should be returning soon enough, Gohan. Speaking of training, Gohan says, soon, I'll get back to it too. We never know what may happen. Piccolo appreciates the will to defend and protect again, but also knows how serious Gohan is about his other responsibilities to which Gohan vows that he will find a compromise. Over on planet Paishin, a planet with gravity 2,000 times that of the Earth, we see Vegeta flying at blinding speeds, destroying mountains and toppling cliffs along the way. Damn it, I'm plateauing, Vegeta says, as he comes to a halting stop on the ground. All of these training methods are becoming completely useless. Moments earlier, however, as all of this was simultaneously happening, on the debris remaining from planet Taco Taco's moon, we see one of the most devastating images I think has ever been related to Dragon Ball. Goku, beaten beyond belief, has taken on the wrath of Beerus' attack as the very skin on his back and legs has been burned off, revealing nothing but the muscles and tendons below as he shields the young child from certain destruction. Lord Beerus, Goku stutters, angrily, in pain and feeling pushed far past the brink at this point. Without my help, he goes on, a whole civilization would have been extinguished by your hand, he says crying. Guess I'm just doing my job as a god of destruction, Beerus says nonchalantly as Goku seems to almost black out now, whether it be from his words or a combination of both pain and anger. Goku tells the young child to not worry and don't be afraid because everything's going to be alright, as Goku has used the remainder of his energy as a shielding aura for the young boy, but eventually, he loses consciousness. Never has a mortal offered me such a fight, Beerus admits. Even within the gods, rare are those who force me to use such power. However, warrior, you've reached your limits, he says, as we shows up beside him now. Goku just doesn't seem to be done though, as his psyche begins running wild as he attempts to find solitude deep within himself and channel a power never before thought possible. Whoa, water? Just when I was getting thirsty, he thinks to himself, as his mind flows endlessly now. But what is this place actually? It's so nice. Guys. Vegeta, aren't you with the others? 
You're completely useless, Kakarot. Hey, calm down. Wake up, Son Goku. Baba, where'd you come from? This is when Goku finally is able to regain consciousness, however, but what happens next is stunning. As he gets to his feet, his wounds still glaring, a mystical aura begins surrounding him as his Ultra Instinct form returns, but this time something is different. Goku, within the blink of an eye, returns the child to planet Taco Taco's surface and we can see that he seems to even be overcoming his severe injuries. He flies past both Beerus and Whis to the absolute shock of Beerus as he leads them away from the planet again. This is when Goku flies beneath another large moon nearby and begins to lift it. This is when extreme amounts of energy begin to leave his body leading to what I can only describe as the planets aligning with his aura as his next attack is about to take Dragon Ball to a completely different level. As Goku prepares a punch, moons and planets alike gather in the shape of a serpent as the very dynamic of space begins to shift around his attack. Goku prepares to release a celestial dragon fist as even Beerus seems worried about this oncoming attack. All of a sudden, an aggressive black lightning surrounds Goku's attack as he notices something has just changed here. This is when a hand comes crushing down on Goku's shoulder to his surprise and behind him, we can see Beerus has transformed but not just any transformation. He's transformed into something you would only expect to see in a nightmare, as a true destroyer now stands before him. Be proud, son Goku, he says. I can barely remember the last time I combined these two powers. As Goku peers back at him, he instantly separates himself from Beerus' grip, appearing behind him on another boulder. Useless, Beerus says. You're as fast as a turtle to me now, he chuckles, having never lost sight of Goku. Goku begins preparing a Kamehameha now as he gets into his stance and this next shot is just legit breathtaking. As Goku prepares what almost looks like something akin to a Rasen Shuriken Kamehameha with a silhouette mirroring his entire being in the attack. Wow, they really are pushing it, Whis says. Ultra Instinct combined with his destructive form, Lord Beerus does recognize Goku as a powerful warrior. Just when my body was getting rusty, Beerus says, getting excited about this next attack from Goku. And then, Goku goes to release his attack. But before he's able to do it, searing pain shoots all throughout his body as his energy depletes instantly and he returns to his base form. To both Whis and Beerus' surprise, Goku is finally spent. This devastating rematch with Beerus has finally taken its toll on the Saiyan warrior, but the amount of progression and with the way he pushed Lord Beerus will be unforgettable. As Goku falls unconsciously through the endless vacuum of space, both Whis and Beerus have to admit how impressive Goku was. Whis still mentioning how hard Ultra Instinct is to control and Beerus finally realizing all the damage they did across the multiverse, including to his own planet. In the beginning of this chapter of Dragon Ball Kakumi, Goku proved his worth against one of the strongest beings in existence, pushing Beerus further than we've ever seen him push before, but this is just the beginning. Peace may seem to be returning to usual in the world of the Z Fighters now, but the Oracle Fish's warning still ring in the ears of Whis, as a devastating secret will soon come to light, one that the gods may not even be able to contain themselves.